Now we are going to look at theoretical framework in social work research introduction. A researcher while writing the statement of the problem needs to describe the theoretical framework of his or her research problem. A theoretical framework is a collection of interrelated variables. This lesson deals with formulation of theoretical framework of a research study. The objectives of this lesson are firstly to understand the theoretical framework and secondly to learn how to prepare theoretical framework. What is theoretical framework? Theories are formulated to explain, predict and understand phenomenon and in many cases to challenge and extend the existing knowledge within the limits of critical bounding assumptions. The theoretical framework is the structure that can hold or support a theory of a research study. The theoretical framework introduces and describes the theory that explains why the research problem under study exists. A theoretical framework consists of concepts and together with their definitions and reference to relevant scholarly literature existing theory that is used for your particular study. The theoretical framework must demonstrate an understanding of theories and concepts that are relevant to the topic of the research paper and that relate to the broader areas of knowledge being considered. The theoretical framework is most often not something really found within the existing literature. You must review course readings and pertinent research studies for theories and analytical models that are relevant to the research problem you are investigating. The selection of a theory should depend on its appropriateness, ease of application and explanatory power. The theoretical framework strengthens the study in the following ways. Firstly, an explicit statement of theoretical assumptions permits the reader to evaluate them critically. Secondly, the theoretical framework connects the researcher to existing knowledge. Guided by a relevant theory, you are given a basis for your hypothesis and choice of research methods. Articulating the theoretical assumptions of a research study forces you to address questions of why and how. It permits you to intellectually transition from simply describing a phenomenon you have observed to generalize about various aspects of that phenomenon. Fourthly, having a theory helps you to identify the limits of those generalizations. A theoretical framework specifies which key variables influence a phenomenon of interest and highlights the need to examine how those key variables might differ and under what circumstances. By virtue of its applicative nature, good theory in the social sciences is of value precisely because it fulfills one primary purpose to explain the meaning, nature and challenges associated with the phenomenon. Often experienced but unexplained in the world in which we live so that we may use that knowledge and understanding to act in more informed and effective ways. A theoretical framework is a collection of interrelated variables. The framework guides our research study and determines what we will study or measure and what statistical relationships we will apply to test the proposed hypothesis. To understand the process of developing a theoretical framework, we will consider a research topic that is factors affecting life satisfaction of elderly. The first and foremost step in preparing theoretical framework is to look for theories related to the main concept in the research topic that is life satisfaction of elderly. While reviewing the literature, a researcher comes across various theories of aging. These theories form the basis of several hypotheses psychosocial theories of aging. 
the most common and popular psychosocial theories of aging or socio behavioral theories of aging with inherent directions for successful aging are first one disengagement theory that is given by Cumming and Henry. Disengagement theory suggests that adults become increasingly withdrawn as they get older. Disengagement theory was the first theory of aging developed by social scientists. It was originally formulated by Elaine Cumming and Warren Errol Henry in their 1961 book Growing Old. In Growing Old, Cumming and Henry develop a logical argument for why older adults would naturally disengage from society. They formulate their argument along with nine postulates to explain why it is rational for individuals who know that death is approaching and who have seen friends of their age pass to begin to anticipate their own deaths and disengage. Activity theory given by Liu Vygotsky. Activity theory of aging argues that the more active people are the more likely they are to be satisfied with life. The theory assumes that how we think of ourselves is based on the roles of activities in which we engage. Activity theory says that activities that are discarded due to diminishing physical capacities should be replaced by other less physically taxing activities as one age. Social activity is essential to life for it maintains physical emotional well being during aging. Successful aging requires retention of adequate levels of activity and when roles and activities are relinquished newer one should be assumed. Lemon and colleagues in 1972 have extended the theory to consider the effects of different types of activity. They identified these areas of activity as informal activity on a personal or intimate level, formal activity that is participation in organizations and solitary activity. Both informal and formal activities are seen as providing more opportunity for role supports which are seen as contributing to life satisfaction than does solitary activity. Continuity theory given by Robert Ashley, it says the continuity theory of aging states that older adults will usually maintain the same activities, behaviors, relationships as they did in their earlier years of life. According to this theory, older adults try to maintain this continuity of lifestyle by adapting strategies that are connected to their past experiences. The continuity theory modifies and elaborates activity and disengagement theories. Theory of successful aging given by Robert Kahn. Theory of successful aging refers to physical, mental and social well-being of elderly people. It reflects a changing view on aging where a stigma is associated with old age has led to considering elderly people as a burden on society. Consequently, in the past, most of the social science researchers have been focusing on negative aspects of aging. Research on successful aging, however, acknowledges the fact that there is a growing number of elderly persons functioning at a high level and contributing to the society. Social science researchers working on this subject search for defining what differentiates successful from usual aging in order to design effective strategies and medical interventions to protect health and well-being from aging. Some social science researchers are critical of the very term successful aging as it implies failure on the part of those who do not meet some criteria derived from psychological and physiological definitions. On examination of these theories, suppose you find out that the activity theory is the theory which explains the research problem in questions in better ways than other theories, you need to gather more literature 
about this theory and try to identify the variables and its interplay that explains the research problem based on the activity theory interrelated concepts constructs and variables we prepare our theoretical framework thus the theoretical framework is the structure that explains the research problem and examines the theory it also tells us to what extent the theory holds good and how it can be restated based on the proposed research study now we can develop a theoretical framework of our study for that first of all we try to examine interrelationship between concepts constructs and variables based on activity theory a hypothetical interrelationship between concepts constructs and variables are shown independent and dependent variables review of the theories reveals that life satisfaction of elderly is affected by a set of variables such as self perception social support and participation in social activity therefore self perception social support and participation in social activity are independent variables and life satisfaction of the elderly is the dependent variable the next step in developing a theoretical framework of the research study is to develop the theoretical framework we try to present the interrelationship among independent and dependent variables based on activity theory and a hypothetical interrelationship between concepts constructs and variables a theoretical framework is shown the proposed theoretical framework starts with interrelationship between emotional well-being and social activity it indicates that participation in one social activity more or less depends upon the status of emotional well-being of the elderly further it shows that interrelationship between emotional well-being and social activity leads to self perception which affects life satisfaction of an elderly in addition to this the interrelationship between emotional well-being and social activity also indicates that it also affects participation of an elderly in formal and informal activities which in turn leads to life satisfaction of the elderly persons to sum up a researcher while writing the statement of the problem needs to describe the theoretical framework of his or her research problem a theoretical framework shows a collection of interrelated variables a theoretical framework is a structure that can hold or support a theory of a research study it introduces and describes the theory that explains why the research problem under study exists theoretical framework must demonstrate an understanding of theories constructs and concepts that are relevant to the topic of research and that relate to the broader areas of knowledge being considered to develop a theoretical framework one has to review the relevant literature for theories and analytic models that are relevant to the research problem under study the selection of a theory should depend on its appropriateness ease of application and explanatory power while reviewing the literature a researcher comes across various theories of aging the most common and popular psychosocial theories of aging or socio behavioral theories of aging with inherent directions for successful aging are disengagement theory activity theory continuity theory and theory of successful aging on examination of these theories suppose you find out that the activity theory is the theory which explains the research problem in question in better way than other theories you need to gather more literature about this theory and try to identify the variables and its interplay that explains the research problem based on the activity theory interrelated concepts constructs and variables a theoretical framework is prepared thus the theoretical framework is the structure that explains the research problems and examines the theory 
It also tells us to what extent the theory holds good and how it can be related based on the proposed research study.